How's it going guys, Real Rabman here, back at it again with another video, and today we're going to talk about uh, basically what does the new NASCAR game need that should be coming out uh, sometime next year, so I'm just calling it NASCAR 17 for now. Um, so what, what does it need, what needs to be in the game for it to recapture what a lot of NASCAR fans kind of want it to be, but uh, the first game, NASCAR Heat Evolution, did not live up to, so... Uh, let's just get right into it. So I decided to make this video because I'm done talking about NASCAR Heat Evolution. Like, that game, it's run its course, it came and died really quickly. Um, whatever patches do go on with it will not really fix the entire game. It'll fix a couple of the glitches and a couple of the bugs and a couple of things that should be in it. Uh, but I'm pretty much done talking about that. I'm talking about what does uh, DMR and Monster Gaming need to do for NASCAR 17 in order to just regain the capture of great NASCAR gaming. And the reason why I say regain it is because when people talk about the NASCAR game franchise, when it went from uh, Papyrus and also went through the NASCAR heat devs again with Monster Gaming, then it went through EA Sports. Um, and then uh, after EA Sports, it was with Utechnics. And uh, now we're back with Monster Gaming and DMR. The main uh, bright point of NASCAR uh, gaming was 2002 to 2006. Uh, you had NASCAR Racing 2003. You had uh, Dirt to Daytona. You had NASCAR Thunder 2003 and 2004. NASCAR uh, Total Team Control, uh, which was the 2006 game, was good. And, and all the EA Sports games, 2003 through 2000. Um, six were was good now you notice that there was competition back in the day you had ea sports you had papyrus you had monster gaming because papyrus was making games monster gaming was making games ea sports was making nascar games until uh, ea basically bought out the license and they were only the only one able to make a nascar game now there is no competition so i want to make sure that monster gaming knows you can't just make shitty games because there's no competition it's understandable that there's no one out there to make a better game, but we want to have the best quality game possible, and these are the things that have to be in it. When we all look back at those games, what do we look at as to what made them so great? And I feel like to a lot of you, you could leave down in the comments below and let me let me know. I just I'm talking for myself, and I want you guys to talk for yourself as well as what made those games so great and why we all want those games back. Now, one thing that it made that was great for me when I played them was they had immersive they were deep career modes in the game they had a lot of different modes in the game and just overall single player was fantastic you didn't have online racing back in the day but online racing was introduced around i think nascar thunder 2004 and that's where it was first introduced but other than that online racing was not part of those games what was part of those games was the really deep career modes the scenes were before race, you had MRN calling it. Welcome everyone to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's time once again for the running of the Coca-Cola 600 here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. And EA Sports is here to bring you all the action. This is an awesome facility, isn't it? A lot of these teams are based in this area and this is a 2,000 acre dream come true for any NASCAR fan. I don't think there's a bad seat anywhere in this place. And there's always great racing to go along with it. You had victory lane celebrations. You had moments where you could fight in the garage after a race. Not really fight, but have a discussion after the race. You had an agent who gave you phone calls, who gave you contracts, who gave you sponsors. You were able to buy a team in NASCAR 2006. You could have bought Hendrick Motorsports, hired your own drivers and your own pit crew, and started from there. But before you got there, you had to go through the uh, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series. Then you had to go through the Truck Series, the Nationwide Series, and then go to Cup. You had to go through four series in their fight to the top mode. Back in uh, NASCAR in Dirt to Daytona, you had to start in the Dirt Series and then go to Trucks Nationwide and then Sprint Cup Series. And while you were doing that, you were the running your own team. You had to buy multiple parts, over 100 parts. You had to upgrade your car in many different ways where they would make a difference. And the physics of all the games were pretty good. That's what made those games so great. It's what made them just be the best NASCAR games possible. And that's, what, that's everything that these new games don't have. 
Let's start with Eutechnics. The Eutechnics games had a horrible career mode, all of them. All you did was pick a driver or you create a new driver, and you try to go win a championship. There was no upgrading, there was nothing going on after the race, there was nothing going on before the race, there was nothing, there was no agent giving you some ideas, there was none of that. It was just very blatant, just go straight through it and finish. With NASCAR Heat Evolution, you start a career mode, you have a lazy text of someone just saying, hey, great job, or a tweet of a driver just saying, hey, good job, and you upgrade your car, but the car upgrades don't really do anything since you're already fast in the first season and difficulty's all messed up, and just like normal, you just go straight through it, you don't feel like you're in an actual career mode. This is what we need to recapture in the new NASCAR games. We need to recapture that feeling of being an actual driver in a career. How about when you start the race, instead of having uh, Rick Allen do a quick 30 second intro, which is actually less, like 15 second intro, where he just talks and there's nothing going on. What about you give details about some drivers, just like in NASCAR Thunder, in, in the NASCAR Thunder games, where you would have a call and you'd have your analyst, like let's say in this case we could get Steve Letarte or Jeff Burton in the new games, to give it little updates on guys like Tony Stewart, uh, guys like Dale Earnhardt Jr., then like us, and then some other drivers before the race, have the national anthem played, have the entire pre-race played, at least a minute, two minute sequence where you can do that, and you feel like you're now in an actual career. Jeff Green might not be a household name, but he's had a lot of success recently in stock cars. Well, you know, there's no doubt, he won the Bush Series Championship in 2000 by over 600 points, and he's finished runner-up in that series to a couple of talented guys with the names of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kevin Harvick. The 151 car will start this race a little farther back than he's used to. Yeah, he was due for one of these bad starts, though. Nobody can start up front all year. You're going to have a bad qualifying run now and then. Kurt Busch has a solid top 10 spot in the standing so far. Yeah, he needs to focus on this race. A poor finish can quickly bounce you out of the top 10, but a win can gain you several positions, might even put you in the top five. We'll see what happens. You are now a driver in this world where you feel like you're able to really race. After the race is done, why can't we do some victory lane celebrations? What about if we want to do a burnout? Um, but we're going to burn her down just a little bit. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And when you go to a victory lane celebration, have a legitimate victory lane celebration where you drive in a pit lane you're, or drive in a victory lane and your pit crew's happy for you. Just like in the older games where they put, they even put the sponsor things on top of the car, the little soda bottle. And then you drive, you get out of the car, you stand on the, the window net and you, or you stand on the side of the car, my bad. And you take the little Coca-Cola bottle and you spread it over the place. Such little details like that, that re it reminds me of why those games were so great. Just little, little details that should not be hard to add in these games, but they put you into the game. You don't just drive a race car, try to finish first, and that's it. That's too lazy, it's too boring. You want to be in the career mode. Now, obviously, the physics have something to do with this. I'm not really going to talk about the physics. I, if you look at my channel, and a lot of you guys already know, I've talked about physics in NASCAR Heat Evolution way too much. I You already know how I don't like them. We, we'll talk about that for another day. We know the physics have to be fixed, but if you add the content, everything around it, it at least helps. There's a lot that needs to be done to these games. There's a lot that needs to be done in NASCAR 17, NASCAR 18, NASCAR 19, or the, the next couple of games that a lot has to be done. But start with just immersiveness into the game. Listen, online for NASCAR Heat Evolution is not terrible. If you could get a couple of guys who can race you can do it. But again, 
we all say, and I see this a lot in the comments, tell, you can't tell me I'm wrong here, because I see a lot of this in the comment section. Why do they make the, why can't they make a game as good as this, blah, blah, when I do the NASCAR Thunder 2004, why can't they make a game as good as Dirt to Daytona, which everybody loves Dirt to Daytona? Those games never had online. If you go back and play them, those games don't have online, and if you did have online, you raced with four players and it was absolutely awful. You, no one would ever do it. What did those games have? They had unlockables. You could drive as legend drivers. I said this before NASCAR Heat Evolution came out. Why can't you drive as Jeff Gordon? Why can't you drive as Dale Earnhardt? I want to drive as Alan Koike, Dale Daryl Waltrip, Cale Yarbrough, Bobby Allison. I want to drive as all those guys, but I can't. Why can't I drive as Mark Martin or Rusty Wallace? When in the NASCAR Thunder series, you had Thunder Plates. And when you went through a career mode or went through Race Now, you unlocked those Thunder Plates that you can use in your own actual game that you can play by yourself. Paint schemes were endless. You had multiple paint schemes for every driver. And this is where I give them a little bit of a leeway because I know it's a business and you have to make money. So now that paint schemes cost or are basically d uh, gone as DLC, I'm okay with it as long as the game is good. But like, ha as long as the game is bad, like NASCAR Heat Evolution is, I'm not okay with it. I did not spend any money in the DLC because I'm not going to give a company money when they don't put a good enough effort into their game. Another little detail. When you go to the, the challenges, okay? So... This is something NASCAR Heat was actually really famous for back in the day was their little their uh, their challenges, and uh, it was also popular in EA Sports games the uh, Thunder challenges. Now, when you had these, and especially after Thunder, I think it was NASCAR 05 and NASCAR 06 as well. You, they still had the the challenges. It was just like in a different kind of format, um, but you had these little video clips. So it would say 2006 uh, Pepsi 400, okay, and you would have to do a challenge as Tony Stewart. You would have a clip of someone interviewing Tony Stewart, and he gives his little own detail about the race. It's like this 30 second to a minute clip before you do the challenge, and then it puts you in the challenge. Just little details like this, putting the videos in your game, not just having a menu screen saying, hey, Carl Edwards wants to challenge you, it's this, 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 go do it, and then you just get put into a spot and that's it. That's just stupid, it's boring, I don't feel like I'm into a game. If I actually have video clips of these guys telling me, hey, this is what I did, now how about you go do it, it it's what makes the challenges fun. You had wreck avoidance challenges where the guys would joke around in the video clip and be like, ah, I can't believe I missed it. Now you have to miss it. Especially NASCAR Thunder 2003. They would talk to you. I remember Jeff Gordon in the 2001 Brickyard uh, 400 was a challenge in that game. And he was like, it was my birthday and I wanted to really win this for Rick Hendrick. Now it's your turn to go win this. Here's how a Winston Cup champion likes to celebrate his 30th birthday. Get behind the wheel of your race car on a hot August afternoon in Indianapolis. Okay, fine. I only qualified 27, but this is my home track and this is the Brickyard 400. I'd won there twice already, and come on, it's my birthday weekend. I spent the last 20 laps of that race fighting off Sterling Marlin. So now I'm gonna drop you behind the wheel of the DuPont Chevrolet and let you relive the last three laps of the 2001 Brickyard 400. I won my third Brickyard that day. Let's see if you can bring it home too. I had Jeff Gordon talking to me in the game. I don't have a menu screen just talking to me in the game. I'm not just reading something off a stupid screen. I'm having someone tell me, hey, I'm challenging you to do what I did. Now go do it. Now that's something that's little, but it makes a big difference in the game, guys. Trust me, why do you think we all loved the games back in the day? It was little details like this that just made it feel so much better. Challenge you'll be rewarded with rep and performance points. So what does NASCAR 17 need? I personally believe it needs a lot better immersion. It needs better celebrations. It needs better intros to races. Uh, graphics need to be better as well, but I'm, I'm really talking about the details around it. So before a race, I wanna see a really well done intro 
that puts me into the race weekend and I feel like I'm really battling for something. I want to see myself be able to celebrate or have an argument with another driver or have a post-race interview or something like that after the race so I feel like I am a driver in the game. During the race, the physics need to be improved a lot more. I know I haven't touched on that a lot in this video, but I just you know, that, it, that has to be improved a lot more. Uh, I might make another video just talking about the physics and how to fix that as well, uh, but just mainly just, yeah, that has to be a lot better. When you enter the game, just another small detail, when you enter the game, give us like a quick 30 second intro. You know how uh, NBA 2K has that little two minute video where they introduce you to the game or, or EA Sports. EA Sports, it's in the game and you had someone telling that to you. EA Sports, it's in the game. EA Sports, it's in the game. NASCAR Thunder 2003. Or just something that little, that small little detail where it puts you in the game and you go to a menu screen. And I actually, I give you Technics credit here because you Technics did a good job uh, with the uh, the menu, with the menus basically. You would enter and the first thing you see is you're in a garage or you're in a, uh, a, a pit shop and you have your crew members working around you. NASCAR 09 had a good one as well where you had this entire line of cars that were being built for you and you had pit crew members going in and out and you could hear the, the just the the screws and the wrenches going into the cars and that's just immersion. You're not just a car sitting in victory lane and it just says NASCAR Heat Evolution or something like that. Why do you put a victory lane as your menu screen, but you don't let us have victory lane celebrations in the game when we finish a race? Seriously, little things like that matter. They matter a lot. Guys, DMR and Monster Gaming have a long way to go. They have a long way to go. They've just restarted. They're using an engine that's not very good, and it's going to be hard for them to recapture that. But if they can... This is going to be really fucking good. I promise you that. All these details that we loved about the d games in the past, all these details that they said they looked at and they wanted to bring back. When we decided to get back and we kind of like worked out a plan, the first thing we did is we went and played all the old games. And the goal was to kind of get back into the sport and kind of like get a feeling for what we can, could do, what we're interested in doing with the product and what was done before and how to make a better experience. None of them are in the new games. The only thing that is in the new game is when you drive off of pit road and you hear that sound when you're trying to go into first gear, look up a clip of NASCAR uh, Dirt to Daytona and then look up a clip of NASCAR Heat Evolution when you start, get, when you either go out of qualifying or you go to practice and you put the car in a first gear and you hear that quick little engine sound like and it goes straight through. It's the same exact sound as NASCAR Dirt to Daytona. It's just a copy and paste file. If hard work is put into it and details are looked at and you can take those things that made the game so makes NASCAR great, take a sports game and make it into a realistic video game where you have those immersions where you actually, it doesn't feel like a video game anymore. I actually feel like if I'm playing a basketball game, I have a post game interview, I'm responsible for what I have to say and there are consequences to it. I feel like before the game, I'm having interactions with my teammates. You could do that in a NASCAR game as well. Talk with your teammates or something. These things are hard to do, but just the simple things of like intros and victory lane celebrations and, and videos on lightning challenges and the menus being better and just better graphics and better scenarios and just stuff like that is why you remember a game. Another thing. Fantasy tracks. There are no fantasy tracks. Remember the fantasy tracks back in the EA Sports games like Tiburon Speedway or the Red Bull Ring or you could go drive on Daytona Beach. These are things that can be made. These are things that can be created, but they just don't think of it. it I can't think. I don't think it's possible that they did not think of that. If you go look back at these games that's a huge part of it just all these unlockables that you could do unlockable paint schemes unlockable drivers legend drivers fantasy tracks uh, you had the mr clean pit crew like all these things that made those games so great they have to be they have to find a way to regain that magic and put it into the new games guys that's what nascar 17 needs and nascar 18 and nascar 19 and the nascar gaming franchise as it goes on. It's going to take time, obviously. Not everything is going to be put into NASCAR 17, and we could already tell because there was nothing put into NASCAR Heat Evolution that we would have wanted back in the day. And there's videos like this where people need to make them. If you guys want to make a video like this, go ahead and make it. And I, tag me in it, and I'll see it. And I'll try to tag those guys in it as well, you know, DMR and Monster Gaming, because that's the only way we're going to get through to them, because they, they don't see it.
They don't really understand. I'll get a comment from them or a message saying, you know, we take all criticism or they'll tweet you on Twitter saying we, we're taking all criticism. We're sorry about this. We're fixing it in a patch, blah, blah, blah. But when results are not given, then I'm going to continue to get on them. And I hope you guys understand that. These videos usually tend to get the most amount of dislikes because a lot of people like the game and they think it's really good and then they don't agree with my opinion and they dislike it. It's a, it's a free country. Everyone has their own opinion. I don't, it, it is what it is. But until I see results, I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to continue to try to push the message. And I want you guys to push the message as well. Because there's no way we're going back to the glory days if there's no message being pushed as to what we want in the game. And if there's no message being pushed, then it's just going to be a continuous thing like you Technics, where it was bad game after bad game after bad game. These guys obviously have a lot more passion than you Technics, but the first game was a bad game so it's still the same result the effort it might be different but the result is the same and i'm looking at results so until then until we get the results that are better we got to give the the right criticism to them and see what they need in the game to make it better for the future guys if you like the video make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and i will see you guys later i hope you're having a great day make sure you comment down below what you want in the game let me know what you want in this game so they can see it as well because I, I feel like that's what i think the game needs because i'm really going back like they said they said they looked back at their previous games let's go back to their previous games and see what was so great about it push it forward comment down below let me know what you think i will see you guys later hope you're having a great day and peace out